Hi, I'm Dan Cox, and I'm here with Lacey Shookman, Invicta Fighter. She's got a fight coming up, uh, Invicta 12, on the 24th of this month. Uh, Lacey, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, you know, just excited. Training camp's been going really great. Um, you know, I'm just very excited. It's been a long time since I've been there, so I think Invicta 3 was the last time I, I had the opportunity to compete for them, so I'm very excited to be back. Yeah, and you know, uh, I won't go off on that, but I, I kind of thought that you took that fight personally. Um, it was a heck of a fight. Um, now your fight coming up is, is against, and I, man, forgive me if I mispronounce your name, Jenny. Jenny Lestriver, I believe? Yeah, Jenny Lestriver. Okay, beautiful, thank you. Um, now, what what in the you pre preparation for this fight? Um, obviously, every opponent is different. Is there anything that you're doing in this camp that maybe is a little different than the norm to face her? And what do you think her biggest weapon is going to be that you have to look out for? Oh, um, well, I know coming into this, um, Jenny's very well known for her jujitsu. Um, I also know that she was a um, college track athlete. So those are, you know, she, you, you can expect that she'll probably have some decent cardio, um, you know, that she'll be running. Um, that's something I always do. So it kind of worked out well. Um, as well as I'm also, you know, a purple well in jiu-jitsu. So I feel like this is a really exciting matchup because we match up very similarly. But I also feel that I have, you know, strength as far as the striking goes, um, the clinch game goes, that are going to really benefit me. So we've just been definitely drilling our strengths, but as well as, you know, just improving the things that um, will benefit me against her. Right. And she, now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but she does have some length to her. Uh, so, I mean, obviously getting inside, which, you know, if you watch your past fights, that's something that you really don't have much of a problem doing. I mean, I, I've watched you get them in to the cage. Once you get to the cage, your strength is really extraordinary for the size. You're able to get some of these girls down, put them down, heavy ground and pound. Now, considering the fact that she is a jujitsu fighter, but you are as well, um, is the, do you want to try to keep this fight standing, uh, or you're you're comfortable wherever it goes? Um, knowing that she is a little bit taller, um, I'm not too concerned about the length. Um, pretty much everyone I train with is taller than me, so I'm I'm pretty used to training that. Um, but going into this, you know, um, I don't, I really don't ever um, decide where I want to take it. I kind of let the fight decide for me. Um, I try to be, you know, well-rounded and prepared in every area. Um, I definitely think that um, my striking could lead it to the ground rather than having to forcefully take it to the ground or fight from body clinch or cage, or, you know, to try to get it to the ground. I think that um, hopefully my striking will lead it there. <laughs> right. And, and pressure. I mean, because uh, your game, uh, as I watch, I see a lot of pressure um, and a lot of heart. Um, I don't think that someone has broken you inside the cage, not in any fight that I've seen. And on the contrary, you're relentless uh, and you just keep coming and coming and coming. Um, I, I wonder though, the stand-up, I think you've got a pretty big advantage in the stand-up in this fight, uh, other than maybe her length. Um, so is this something that uh, if you are able to keep it standing, you think, obviously you hope to finish the fight, but uh, are you going in there looking for a finish? Because you don't go in there to point fight. You don't go in there to win, you know, a decision. You're going in there to finish every single fight. And that's why the fans love you, Lacey. And, and that's why it's so entertaining. Um, you know, I'm not necessarily looking for a finish. I mean, obviously that's the ideal outcome of every, you know, competition. Um, for this particular one, you know, she fights very similarly um, in pretty much every fight. She's, you know, uses a little bit of her striking to work to her clinch game to try to get a takedown to play jiu-jitsu. Um, I think that that plays in, you know, kind of perfectly to what we do. Um, I'm, you know, I just know I gotta, you know, look out for a little bit of her striking and be aware of her clinch game. So I think movement and angles are gonna be really key in this fight. Um, but, you know, I, I don't have a particular way that I want this fight to end. Um, I don't think that I'm not looking, you know, for a knockout every time you look for a knockout, you never get one. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm just kind of going in there with the mentality that I really want to display. Um, I've made a lot of improvements um, since the last time I was at Indicta, and I really just want to display how much I've learned um, and that I'm, you know, coming to a point where 
I don't, um, I, I fought really hard when I first started my career and I, I had this, you know, drive kind of almost like a street fighter, I guess you would say, you know, where, you know, fighting was what was important to me. Um, as I, you know, grown up and I've matured and I've experienced a lot in the sport now, I'm starting to realize that um, I had to find this, this calm, this, um, this strategical approach to my fight. And so I'm kind of in the crossroads right now between finding, you know, how much fight to give and how much, you know, to worry about technique. So, you know, I'm kind of excited to see what I'll do in this fight. Right, and I mean, uh, obviously when you go into the fight, it's not what the opponent's gonna do, it's what you are going to do to the okay. opponent. Um, okay. You don't wanna fight on defense, correct? So, correct. now, Invicta is, I mean, it's really starting to blow up. It's getting a lot of momentum. Um, you know, we see Cyborg getting a lot of attention. Uh, she was at the Invicta 11 card and she had her fight against Tweet and she obviously, she, she won that fight pretty pretty easily. Um, with a victory here, Lacey, where do you see your career going in Invicta and what would you like, and I know you don't want to overlook any opponent, but let's say, and I think you're going to anyways, but let's say you go through this fight, you come out and awesome performance, you win. What are you looking for next? Um, you know, I'm just hoping that they'll continue to put me on exciting cards, um, continue to give me um, the level of opponent that I'm at. Um, I have a lot of fights, which sometimes hinders me from fighting some of these new people that are coming up. Um, but I don't necessarily, I've, I've been fighting since 2006, so um, I had a lot of experience very, very early, and so I'm finally coming into myself as an athlete where I need these fair fights from Invicta, so I'm just hoping that they'll continue to offer me, you know, decent fights where I can sh uh, slowly show people my progression and where I am, you know, and who I am becoming as a fighter. And I, you know what, I don't see how that's not possible because your fights are always entertaining. You, uh, like I said, you go in there to finish, you're non-stop. You don't, uh, especially I really love your pressure on top, your top pressure. Um, you really stay busy, kind of reminds me of Frankie Edgar on top in the sense of it's a constant, you're constantly moving, constantly throwing strikes, you're improving your position every time. Um, with her length and her jujitsu background, uh, you know, triangles, things like that. Uh, have you worked on that extra hard to defend these moves against her? Or is this just part of your game already and it's not something that you really had to focus on one single aspect? Um, you know, we a lot try to um, work on defense for just pretty much like MMA has like the four basic submissions. You're probably going to get guillotine, rear naked, triangle, or on guard. That's, you know, of course you just see it more or a weird Peruvian necktie here and there. But you know, those are your typical, you know, things that you need to look out for. So we, we typically always defend our defenses for those things. And going into a fight, knowing that you're fighting someone that's a jiu-jitsu player, we definitely are working harder from the guard, you know, working to pass the guard, working to punch from the guard, um, being aware of exposed limbs, you know, exposed neck, things like that. So, um, you know, definitely we're paying attention to it, but it's something that's definitely in our regular repertoire of training. Right. I, I've watched her fights as well. And, um... You know, I noticed a couple things personally, and I'm curious because, you know, just because let's say she, you have a reach advantage over someone, that can really be a detriment when you get inside on the clinch game. Uh, you're not able to get the leverage on those shots, and you're not able to, to let those shots go on the inside as freely uh, as, as someone like yourself. When you get in that in the clinch area, uh, she tends to do a lot of dipping down to her right with her head. Uh, she seems to really love to eat the, the jab overhand right. I'm sure that's something you, you've uh, watched in the films and everything. Do you do a lot of game planning for your fights, or is it more like you said, the Bruce Lee flow like water, the fight comes and you take it as it, as it goes? Um, you know, it, it's, it's a little bit of both, because I think after I fought Ayaka, I had watched an interview with her, and she talked about that she doesn't necessarily train for her particular opponent, she just trains. And that kind of sparked something in my head because I was, I used to be so concerned with my opponents, I would want to know what they ate for breakfast. I would stalk them, I would know everything about them from the time they were born to the time they were fighting. Um, it got to the point though where it was almost um, an obsession and I was too focused on what they were doing and not enough of what I was doing. 
So um, over the last few years, I think I've really kind of just changed. Um, we always go in with a game plan per se, but our game plan has many branches. So if we come here, at least to here, at least to here, at least to here. But it's all based on what I do um, with the idea of what my opponent's strengths are in the back of my mind. You know, and that, that was a great answer right there, Lacey. And I, I have to ask you, because to me, you, you seem like a fighter from birth, basically. You just have that, when I watch you, it's the look, the spark in the eyes. You love it. You get in there and you love it. And you, you had spoke a little bit about learning to kind of relax and everything. Is that more about controlling that that adrenaline that you get and using it as a weapon as opposed to just trying to handle it and not have that adrenaline dump um you know it's probably a little bit of both also because um i you know i i train fighters me and my husband we run a small gym and um you know i've seen a lot of our competitors um do the dump as we call it you know or just gas out and i think that's always been a really big fear of mine i haven't experienced it um you know i've always not wanted it to happen, so cardio and conditioning is like a huge thing to me. Um, but I think part of it is just not running into stupid things. You know, sometimes when you, you just fight, you aren't aware of what's going on around you. And I think, you know, now that I've had more experience and I've, you know, trained more years, those things are kind of just, you just kind of know, like, okay, you can feel things um, because you're, you're patient or you're calm. It's not necessarily something you're trying to do, and so that's where now I'm, I'm having to remind myself to bring back my fight, that, you know, you're there to punch people in the face, you're there to win the fight by, you know, pretty much hurting them, as, as horrible as I hate saying that, it's not how I look at it, but you're there to go win, you're there to kill, you know, and that's the mentality I need to bring back a little bit more because I've gotten a little bit complacent in the fact that it is a sport, and I have been there a million times, and you know, you, you can't be comfortable because it is a fight, and so that's where I'm kind of learning now. Well, and, and also, I mean, you're looking at a career that can change in a heartbeat. And we've seen where women's MMA has gone. Um, it's uh, just a guess, but I would say that the UFC is going to be expanding the divisions uh, in WMMA with the huge success that they're having. Because, you know, you've got Ronda Rousey, which is, you know, arguably one of the biggest draws, uh, be it men or uh, uh, you know, women, it's, it's just huge what she's doing and has done. And so the opportunities are, are just huge. The referee is in there to save the other fighter, right? And I think Chad Mendez with this fight with Aldo spoke to that, that, um, uh, with Aldo, with, um, uh, excuse me, with uh, Ricardo. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. he kind of backed off a little bit, you know, because he was hurt and he, he realized that, you know, he probably should not do that. He should, that's the ref's job to stop that fight. Uh, is it something that is difficult to do though when you're in the heat of the moment and you see a fighter maybe is, is hurt and the ref's not stepping in quick enough? Um, is it hard to keep that, that fighter mentality of just finish, finish, finish? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, I've had a few fights where I'm like, are you gonna stop this? Like this poor girl is like concussed, you know, under me. But I've also been on the reciprocating end where I'm like, please don't stop it. At any second I could get a submission or at any moment I might be able to get to my feet, you know? And so it, it's a toss up, but that's what their job is, you know? And they should know when to stop it. And if they don't, it is our job to keep going, but I think um, in that moment, I'm usually kind of just looking for like one more devastating shot and kind of looking up at them like, okay, did you see that? Okay, yeah. did you see that? Um, but you know, it's important that you don't lose that focus. And so that is something else I'm, you know, trying to learn because, you know, I don't like being like that. You know, I'm not, I'm not a mean person. I care about the people that, you know, that I, I'm competing against. They're, they're great athletes as well. So, you know, I do have to find that happy medium, but you know, when it comes to winning, you, you got to do it even when it's hard, so. Exactly, and there's nowadays there is so much on the line. Like we we're saying, the opportunities are, are just, they're really huge. And you just don't know when that call is going to come. And now you compete at, at multiple weight classes depending on, I guess, how you're feeling. So let me ask you, how are you feeling going into this fight, Lacey? Are you, you it's obviously, you're, nobody's ever 100% when they get into the cage, I don't think. Um, and I'm not, I, I wouldn't want you to expose injuries for God's sake, but 
looking at you and talking to you, man, you sound really excited. You seem really fresh. And how are you feeling? Um, you know, I feel really good. Um, the last time that I really had a, a weight cut was probably back in 2013. Um, since then, I've only fought at 125. So um, this being my first weight cut again has been um, actually really nice because um, I think as I'm getting older, I'm starting to walk at a little bit lighter weight where I'm closer to walking at 25 instead of 35 like I normally am. Um, so it's been a lot smoother because I don't have to stress to get to 25 and then still lose 10 pounds to make 115 or 20 pounds to make 105. So, um, you know, it's just nice. I'm just eating clean. I'm just training hard. I have enough energy to be able to, you know, push through. I'm not dying and crying to my training partners to be nice to me because I'm dying from starvation. Um, but yeah, no, I feel excellent. I feel really strong. Uh, this is um, because like I said, I am walking at a lighter weight. This is one of the first times at 115 I've been able to continue my strength training. Um, and so I feel very strong, um, more so than I probably ever have been at 115. So. I'm really excited. Um, my physique is looking like it did at 15, at 25 now. So I'm hoping to be more close to what I looked at 105, at 115. So we'll see. You know, I'm just I'm excited. It's it's really nice when camp goes smooth, and it's just been excellent. I've been on great track with my coaches. Um, I'm just stoked. Well, you know, Lacey, you are you're a fan favorite. Uh, social media just loves you, um, and I I cannot wait for the fight. Uh, I know, and I, I've said this to, to some of the other fighters, you're going to hear your coach always in the corner. That's that voice you always hear. But there's going to be another voice that you hear, and you'll be wondering, who is that maniac? And that's going to be me rooting you rooting you on. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's, it's exciting for me, and I can't wait to see the fight. Um, I can't wait to be there. And do you have any shout-outs, anybody you'd like to, uh, to thank? Well, I'd like to thank all of my sponsors, 90 Degree by Reflex, Fighter Girls, Grit Mouthguards, Mass Destruction MMA, MMA Roadhogs, Martial Arts Life Apparel, Tan Time, Zionics Maximum Performance Bands, and of course, Love MMA. Thank you guys for all you do for me. Um, it wouldn't be possible without all of you. Thank you so much for this interview. I'd also like to thank my coaches, my husband, Randall Shookman, my boxing coach, Steve Mestis, my Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu professor, Joaquin Baca, and my wrestling coach, Mike Larita. Thank you guys, everyone at Team Goonies, for helping me get ready for this fight. Can't wait. Thank you so much. Listen, Lacey, I, I can't stress enough how much I'm looking forward to seeing you perform. Um, and I know, uh, speaking myself and for love, man, we're, we're going to be there rooting you on. You know that. Um, I wish you the very best of luck and listen it was an awesome time thank you for giving me the time and, and speaking because the fans really they want to hear from you like I said you're a fan favorite and uh, social media just they, they love Lacey there's no doubt about that well I love them and I appreciate all of the support you know it's, it's not possible without all the people that do support me so I thank you so much Thank you again. Lacey was awesome. And uh, I will see you on the 24th.